A common thought that crosses the minds of loved ones the moment someone in their family is diagnosed with dementia is, will I develop it too? And those who are diagnosed also fear for their children. Will they develop it too? The short answer is, we don't really know. Researchers say that only 5% of all Alzheimer's cases have a direct genetic component. We suspect this if there is a very strong family history of Alzheimer's disease, which means many family members over many generations. There are changes in specific genes that can be directly passed on from parent to child. In this case, children have a 50% chance of developing the disease. The remaining 95% of Alzheimer's cases develop in older adults and don't have a clear-cut genetic cause. It is due to a complex combination of our genes, but also our environment, age and lifestyle. Many of us might develop what we call sporadic Alzheimer's disease in their lifetime. Just as any of us might develop heart disease, cancer or diabetes. But it's true, our genes do play a role. If a parent has Alzheimer's disease, your lifetime risk increases by about 30%. This may sound scarier than it actually is. Let me explain. If you are 65 years old, the risk of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's is 2% per year. In absolute numbers, a 2% annual risk means that 2 out of 165 years olds will develop dementia every year. A family history raises the 2% annual risk by about 30% to 2.6% per year. That means going from 20 cases in a group of 1,000 to 26, or 6 additional cases. So the absolute increase is relatively small. This also shows you that genetic testing is not going to be helpful. It won't tell you whether you will develop the disease. It will only tell you if you are at a greater or lower risk. As you might have guessed, having bad genes is absolutely not the greatest risk factor for developing Alzheimer's. The single greatest risk factor is aging. Age raises the chance of Alzheimer's more than family history. People in their 70s have a 5% chance of being diagnosed, more than twice that of people in their 60s. A family history raises this by 30%, from 5% to 6.5%. Again, the absolute change is relatively small. As with our genes, we unfortunately can't do anything to overcome aging. Instead of focusing on the things that we cannot change, let's focus on the factors that we can change, such as lifestyle. Research shows that a healthy lifestyle can reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer's, even if you have genes that raise your risk. On the other hand, being inactive may completely negate the protective effects of a healthy set of genes. Researchers from Chicago tracked 2,765 individuals over about a decade. They assessed the participants' lifestyle on five metrics. Their diet, their exercise regimen, whether they smoked, their alcohol consumption, and their engagement in mind-stimulating activities such as reading books or playing chess. The researchers then scored each factor, assigning participants a 1 if their behavior was healthy and a 0 if it was unhealthy. They found that individuals with a score of 4 or 5, meaning they pursued 4 or 5 healthy behaviors, were 60% less likely to develop Alzheimer's compared with participants who scored 0 or 1. They also showed that it doesn't matter if you cannot adopt all 4 or 5 lifestyle habits. Aim for one or two. Anything will help, they said. A little side note. The study participants were over 60 years old and were still able to lower their dementia risk by adopting a healthier lifestyle. So it's never too late to change some of your habits. I hope that this video gives encouragement to people who fear that gene mutations alone would determine their destiny. Less than 5% of the genes tied to Alzheimer's will guarantee that you will get the disease. This means that with 95% of the mutations, even small lifestyle changes will make a difference.